1 Corinthians 1, verse 10. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. This is the basis for our church. One God, one church. And we welcome you. If it's your first time here visiting, we want to thank you so much for checking us out. Uh, we're an online church at the moment in the hopes of uh, gathering, uh, well, be, being able to build a chapel and have actual services in the future. Um, but right now, online and online is fine because of our mission, our mission to unite Christians. We're not asking you to quit one church and join ours. It's not about membership or support, if you notice. You check out our other sermons or services. We don't ask for donations. We're not begging you for money. God's word is free, and it always should be. And yes, you can support people that inspire you or help you grow in one way or another. Um, but church is big business in this country. And we're not out to be big business. We're out to help you grow and help you learn about what not only our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did and how he lived, but um, also what his apostles did and their immediate followers. And that's the, uh, the format for this Mass. So it follows a traditional Mass, Catholic Mass format. All right, so we have the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're welcome to join us. We hope you do because um, back then, every service, worship service, had communion to it. It also had an opening prayer. It had a gospel. It had another reading or two. And it always had um, a service. And then the Eucharistic prayer to include communion. So that's what we do here because if it was good enough for the people following Jesus' apostles, it's good enough for us. All right? So, um, just gonna, again, want to welcome you. That's, that's our service format. Besides this service, if someone sent it to you or whatever, we have um, our actual church website, right? And it's www.og-oc.com, www og-oc.com for One God, One Church. If you'd like to call us for prayer or special needs, 800-428-8058. 800-428-8058. We welcome, like I said, our website. And our website contains their services, contains Karen's page. And so um, Karen, my beautiful, wonderful wife, it's on her heart for uh, healing through scripture and just her life experience and the experiences she encounters of others. And it's really good. That's in the process of being revamped. So hopefully soon um, and not on any part of Karen, just on my part really of getting it together to reformat it. So it's just easier to follow along, okay? And then besides that, we have our resources page and that includes a lot of things. The Rosary for Life, which has like 1,500 views. It's our most viewed item. Um, but there's a lot on there, uh, all, all kinds of things. And we encourage you to check it out. Um, the, before I forget, the little video we'll show you today will be not only in our service, but it will be on the resources page, just the video, okay? Because we believe you'll want to share this with a lot of people and see it more than once. Alrighty. So that's it. Okay. And uh, we follow, like I said, a traditional mass format. And so we'll, we'll start our service by bowing our heads and praying. Heavenly Father, speak to us that we may become makers of your peace in our homes, in our communities, and in our world. May we become one body under your authority. And we pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
we bless ourselves, we genuflect when we say the words Jesus Christ, we show reverence to God, we revere and fear Him the proper way, and um, anyway, I could go on to a whole sermon about that, so I'll just stop it there, all right? So now we'll have our scriptural readings. Okay, for today. So our first reading comes from the book of Psalms. It's Psalm 23. Many of you know it by heart. Verses 1 to 4. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I lack. In green pastures he makes me lie down. To still waters he leads me. He restores my soul. He guides me along right paths for the sake of his name. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. And if you're looking for what we use, we use the Catholic Bible. Um, it's the first Bible, written in the 300s AD, I believe, uh, compiled. So, good enough for them again, good enough for us. We're not about saying this is right or this is wrong. Good enough for us, okay? And I say this every week in reverence to our Savior. Part of every Mass worship, as I said, should contain the words of Jesus Christ from one of the four Gospels. So before the reading, we announce the good news, right? Saying, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Gospel of the Lord according to, and in this time it's St. John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 4. And in response, we say, glory to you, O Lord. And we make the sign of the cross on our foreheads, on our lips, and of course on our hearts, because we want Jesus' teaching to be in all of those places, especially our hearts. So, well, I guess all of them, right? Lips, mind, everything. All right. So do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. The Gospel of the Lord. And we say praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. So today we're going to do our best to cover a subject no one likes to talk about. All right? It's the old saying, we all want to go to heaven, but none of us is in a hurry to get there. And how true that is. Okay, So we will all experience death in life and the loss of, loss of loved ones. Grief is a normal emotion, yet it feels completely foreign as we experience it. The reality of loss reminds us of our mortality and the longing for more. God has promised to be with us and to provide us peace in the midst of pain. I'm covering this today because actually Thursday the 4th, which is when this is being recorded, Thursday, February 4th, is the five-year anniversary of my mom Jean's passing, and the three-month an uh, three anniversary of my brother's, Jake's, passing. They were both passed away on the fourth of the month, of the month, okay? Mom, February 4th, like I said, and Jake on November 4th of 2020, this past year. And um, death is probably the hardest thing for us to talk about. I know I'm at a loss, right, for words when it comes to trying to comfort anyone that has lost a loved one including my own family members and friends. And so I'm going to show you a video, and I ask that you watch it in its entirety, okay? It's critical that you do, all right? And like I said, it'll be posted to our resources page for future viewing on its own merit because it is that good and that important, all right? And like I said, you may wish to share this with others, okay? Now, there is one... Uh, it's a conversation between men, two men early, and early on um, 
in the first few minutes there are, uh, there's a line or two that I'm not particularly fond of. Fond of. Don't let it be a turn off to you. Just um, continue watching. You'll see. It's it's tremendous. All right. So let's roll it. Okay. Afraid to make their faith known because they know it's what makes life worth living. I'm Chris Defendant, a husband, father of six, and I speak to over 80,000 people every year. And all around the world, I get to see that movement as I meet Catholics who inspire me and who show just how amazing faith makes everyday life. Welcome to Real Life Catholic.
meaning and love and who we loved and why we loved, that moment became a kind of an awakening of, wait, this is a profound person. There's something more here, right? Wow. Yeah. And, you know, she wasn't Catholic. She was Buddhist, raised Buddhist. She'd been introduced to Christianity a little bit, but it hadn't been a particularly welcoming introduction. Huh. And uh, she didn't have wonderful feel goods with it. No, no, no opposition, but it just didn't feel good the way it was presented to her. She was able to, uh, to see me, but more importantly, the, some men I was living with that were good, solid Catholic guys that they, they knew how to pray uh, and prioritize mass, but also have fun and be young guys that wow. had joy. And so she probably would count some like evangelicals and say you're going to hell. She did actually. Yeah, they told right. her. They told her that she, because she was Buddhist, that she would go to hell and so would all of her family. Well, naturally. Yeah. Because <laughs> that, that really gets people interested in the faith. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's how I got you. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Are you not aware that you're going to burn in hell forever? Uh, oh, really? tell like me more. To, I'd like to be Catholic. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Liz is in the military and uh, stationed in Southern Virginia at the Coast time. Guard, yeah. Coast Guard. And hardcore, man. Yeah, 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 she was. What was it like having a wife who could beat you up? <laughs> it was pretty awesome. <laughs> so you named this adventurous, it, hardcore Buddhist who's being open to the faith yeah. for the first time because you're seeing this isn't some condemning thing. This is some. This is something attractive and beautiful about yeah, it. And then it doesn't work if it's not. If they don't understand, if people don't understand the attractiveness of the faith. Yeah. What what makes the faith beautiful and attractive? Then I, I wouldn't want somebody to present the. You should be because here's the propositional reason why. He shows himself to us, and it's attractive and beautiful. And it's not a topic, it's a relationship. Yeah. It's, it's a love story. Amen, amen. Yeah. And it's so assuring for me, so so beautiful for me to know that that my wife was welcomed by an infinite love that would be infinitely better than anything I ever did or could give her. And she's uh, welcomed by the friend and God that she has. Yeah, so the so the end goal is to uh, you know a marriage lead your spouse to heaven and uh, well done man and I, I know she's by prayer and example helping kick your butt across the finish line too right yeah that's what it's all about right praise God let's go uh, let's go visit Liz yeah, yeah let's do it. Few places are filled with so much meaning. Since the dawn of human civilization, we've come here to weep and to remember and honor our dead. Approaching Liz's tomb, I feel the grief of loss, but also the faith that my friend hasn't ceased to be, and the hope that all goodbyes are temporary. She personally picks this, pick this spot. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, we're looking and she had said that she wanted to be buried under a tree <laughs> in a place where her kids could uh, find some shade when we got picnics. That's awesome. I get to watch you guys face death from the outside. I gotta say, man, like, uh, you know, don't always just say this to your friends. My admiration for you and for Liz, um, your heroes, so the way you the way you face death with so much grace. I, I regularly find myself talking to you and just get on the phone saying, "Wow, like the grace of God is real." <laughs> um, you know, I think it's Saint Paul talking about peace that surpasses understanding. It didn't. It doesn't make sense. You know. Um, you know, I didn't always see it up close and personal. You know, what, what was her initial response? I mean, your initial response when you get that that, that call and realize, okay. Uh, this is the road in front of us now. I'm terminally ill. You get that call, you have cancer, and the first yeah. thought is fear. And what's that mean? Maybe it gave you confusion. Yeah. And then when things are confirmed, and as you know, cancer, there's surgeries and treatments. It's an ongoing, it's sort of a roller coaster. You know, you and a fight. And a fight? Yeah. yeah. And a fight. You had, we had a very normal human response, which was some, you know, scared because, especially for Liz, what am I going to do for my kids? Yeah. She did not want to leave her kids uh, without a mother. And uh, she had to ask God specifically for what to do, and she did. So I knew I could see her at times when the pain was, you know, a little overbearing, overwhelming, that, that she would be praying for priests and other friends and family. 
just offering it up. Just offering it up. I remember, um, you know, one time I was, it was a really rough day at home. It was one of those days where, like, all my, t all my time, yeah, since it's mine, since I'm the god of my own universe, was being taken away from me, and I run around driving kids everywhere. And then you had told me, Liz said that, that day, I just want to be a mom. I thought, wow, you know, the basic parental duties that, that drive us nuts sometimes, that's someone's dream, you know? And uh, if I just embrace the heart of a servant, the heart of Jesus, the heart that Liz faced death with, it's like, and live for others, then, then all those, those sacrifices we make every day become a joy. Her very, very end. Tell me about the, the, the last hour, you know? Sometime back, I had spoken with her and told her one of my big needs was to be in the room with her when she actually died. I needed to be, of course I was there every day, but I needed to be in the room, and she knew that. And that was months prior to her passing that, that we'd had that conversation. But every once in a while I would mention, well, I, I want to be here. Friday night comes, she, she, she died on Saturday morning. Friday night comes, and I kind of, you know, she was in a hospital bed next to our bed, and I'm laying there, and I just talked to her and said, I apologized, I said, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't, I can't stay up anymore. And I, I said to her, so, <laughs> don't pass away tonight. <laughs> and woke up the next morning, uh, and it had changed. Like this was the final change. And there's there's things that happen when you know. One of the things that happens when you know she was so thin that you could see her uh, pulse very prominently on her neck while she was laying down. And as we're playing the litany of the Sacred Heart. Uh, I actually asked a, a friend of mine in the room, would he lead it? So I hand the, the, the prayer book to him, and I was able to hold her hand. And on the very last line, uh, I was able to see the very last pulse in her neck. And um, I took that as, a, as her very last gift to me, because I wanted to be in the room. That very last next with that very last gift was, was, was leaving me with the thought that she was going to rest in the sacred heart of Christ. natural and shocking, everybody has to experience it. And with the billions of people on this planet, we'll all be replaced by billions more within about 100 years. Every single one of us has to die. So how do you deal with that uncomfortable fact? You know, the Romans and the Epicureans throughout history, they drown that reality with their wine. Buddhists embrace that reality with the notion that we have to let go of our sense of self now. It's just an illusion anyway. You know, atheists, they try not to think about it too much. But Christianity, it's the ultimate defiance to death. We believe in the Christmas invasion. We believe in a God who was born behind enemy lines and walked through the valley of the shadow of death with us. We believe in the Easter victory. We believe in life everlasting. You see, we Christians make peace with death because we can look it in the eye and say, we win. We weren't made for death. We were made for life, and death's days are numbered. Sure, we still have the gut-level fear of death, which is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of being human. It's okay. It keeps us from playing in traffic and running with scissors. And we still have to deal with the pain of death, which is very real. But a new light shines in the darkness. 
and all that pain and fear and sadness and even anger, it's forever changed by Easter Sunday. It's forever changed by the faith that death isn't a period, it's a comma. It's forever changed by the hope of reunion with all those faces that we miss so much. And by the knowledge that we don't face death alone. We have a God who's walking with us. And we have an army of loved ones who went before us who are cheering us on. Right on the other side of the finish line. Sometimes in this show, the reality is safety second. But when shooting guns, safety is absolutely always first. And when it is, target shooting is among the safest sports in the world. six cans down with about 47 bullets <laughs> but they all eventually went down oh yeah, yeah it's all that's all it counts so she would never shot this particular handgun before she shot all six cans with four bullets now, how do you do that right <laughs> because she shot the first one the second one and then just started walking at an angle and shot them from the side all straight down so kind of awesome. she's like that's a great that's a great gun <laughs> And this is like the grizzly gun, right? This will take anything out within 100 feet, as long as I'm not shooting it. All right, kids, so gun safety rule number one, don't point at anything you don't want to shoot. Number two, don't put your finger on the trigger until you're ready to shoot. Rule number three, you can shoot fruits, but not off your friend's head. All right, so uh, this is, seriously, this is the most massive bullet I might ever shoot in my life, okay? Now, this time, I, I mean it. Excellent. I have faith in it. This one's mine. Kill it. Gun lesson number two, right after the safety briefing. When you miss, just blame the sights. It only took us all our bullets, but in the end, humans won. Melon, zero. Okay. Prepare yourselves for the ultimate male body experience. <laughs> Wrapping up our times, I figured we'd let the boys in the film crew join the fun. They work so hard. lessons we can learn from children, seeing men today reminds me that life goes on and on and on. A child's instinct for life is an unstoppable force. 
it points to life eternal. Attention, I have a little gift for you guys. Thank you. So hold on right there. What is it? What is it? Is it a puppy? We go. It's better than a puppy. Watch him learn.
in one of her favorite scripture passages out of the book of Hebrews, and it speaks of how her hope is her anchor. Hope, not fear. Her faith was filled with hope. And because of that hope, she lived differently. She knew her life wouldn't end in emptiness. It's true that the dark night sky can't really say anything back to us when they tell you that your biopsy is positive. But God can. And I can tell you, he does. Liz was fond of telling me that there's no shame in suffering. She asked me many times what sufferings are not gifts. All things are gifts. Her Christian faith, my Christian faith, gave her, gave us joy and freedom and, and real victory. I'm free because my wife was free. So how do you get through those times when you get the breath knocked out of you? Those times when you don't even know if to pray. I'm free because I know my wife is free. I know it's not a personal laws of matter and evolution or cancer that have, made, that have the final say. It's reason and will and love. God, God has the final say. I know my wife has known that she's actually loved more than I can imagine by our good God. You know, my wife used to describe herself as a doom and gloom kind of girl. But that changed with her faith particularly. That changed, of course. She came to realize we're not slaves in the universe and its laws. We're free. We're people who love. We're free to love. That's why we're free. And the truth is, we learn that if you truly turn everything over to God, you have everything. He takes what you give him. He transforms it and gives it back to you. And it's got an entirely new reality. Now, when I pray the creed at Mass, can you imagine the glory in that prayer? To finish it with, I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. But that has a totally new meaning to me every week. It's profound and real. The gospel makes a difference, and I thank God for it. said, I make all things new, all things, even death. The grief of death remains, but thanks to Easter Sunday, it's anchored in hope now. It's made new. Thank you, Jesus. And we look forward to the day when you wipe every tear from our eyes. Until then, walk with us. Find one of So that took place in Portland, Oregon, the site of much... Uh, progressivism, liberalism, you know, as, as uh, Liz says, she could terminate her own life legally in Portland, Oregon, right? But I wanted to sit, come, make a comment about something. The cemetery and the surrounding area, including the statues, is a place called the Grotto. And it's right outside the city of Portland. And it was a favorite place of my mom's when I lived in Vancouver, Washington, and she would, and dad would come to visit. And it's an incredible place of peace and beauty. I encourage you to go there if you have, all have the means. It is simply amazing. You wouldn't think something like that exists right outside of Portland, Oregon. All right? So something in the video that is that, something I noticed in the video is that like me, the men have a hard time talking about death. They nervously laugh. We're all told we should be celebrating because the person is no longer in pain. No, they aren't, but the loved ones left behind sure are, and it never really goes away. I know Karen's parents passed away, her dad, 1993, I believe, and 92, thank you, Karen, and, <laughs> and, uh, she still thinks about her dad and her mom. Her mom was 10 or 11 years later. And uh, it, it, it never goes away, especially when it's someone you really love and care about, okay? So anyway, I'll just, since the video was long, I don't want to keep going. I'll just end with this. Something for you to think about, all right? Mom was a devout Catholic. She was even a spiritual director. Mom knew her way around the Bible 
and the Catholic faith. And the night before mom was released from the hospital to go home, to pass away at home, she told us she saw Padre Pio come to her. So I believe Padre Pio is the one who came and escorted mom to heaven. I know one thing, she was happy she saw him, and I believe it gave her peace. And my brother Jake, Jake was a great man of God, he really was. He was an evangelical who loved his wife, children, grandchildren, parents, siblings, and friends. He really had a big heart for people, especially his family, all right? I'm not sure Jake got the chance to say to anyone who, who he saw escorting him into heaven, but I know for a fact someone did. So it's two different religious denominations, but one Savior. I am convinced they are both in heaven, and not because they were Catholic or Evangelical or anything else. It is because their hearts, because in their hearts, they knew who Jesus was and professed his gospel message. It's how they lived, how they loved, and how they gave. So why is it again that we argue over whose religious denomination is better? Why don't you ask your pastor that question? So I just want to end by saying thank you, Mom. Thank you, Jake, for both of you showing me true faith, love, charity, and unity in the midst of such terrible pain. I love you both, and I miss you terribly. So now for the preparation of the Eucharist, okay? So pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. And we all say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy indeed, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending them down upon, by sending down upon, I'm sorry, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of your resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. 
So let us now say the prayer Jesus himself taught us to pray, the Lord's Prayer. And when I was speaking in the beginning, this also was part of every Mass worship, every, right? every worship service. So our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. So the peace of the Lord be with you always. Now let us offer each other a sign of peace, a handshake, a hug, a kiss. Just uh, peace be with you, my sweetie pie. I love you, Karen. Peace be with you. And um, it's okay to offer each other a sign of peace. All right? So now our communion prayer. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Say, right? Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Now you may take communion, folks. So we'll say the body of Christ. trying to be heretics by having the body and blood of Jesus Christ in part of our service. We know it's important and just believe that Jesus can come into everybody's, anybody's heart as long as their hearts are true and they ask. Okay? So we'll have our final blessing. So having tasted your goodness, Lord, send us out as changed people because we have shared the living bread and cannot remain the same. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace as you go out to serve him and each other. Amen. Folks, before I cut off here, I just want to say uh, Lent is coming really fast. It's the Sunday after Valentine's Day, the 14th, the 17th. Um, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of, uh, or a lot of resources, Electio Divino, um, if you go to EWTN for Lent, for daily prayer, I'm sure Bill Galtier has a lot on Lent, um, and soulshepherding.org and others. But it's a time to just really 
get down on your knees and spend some time getting to know God better. And that's Father, Son, and Spirit. All right? Have a great next few weeks, folks. We'll see you again, God willing. Thanks.